know that bolts are used to hold two components or machine parts together in an assembly. Bolt preload ensures that the mating parts stay connected during the operation of the machine. Insufficient bolt preload may cause the bolts to become loose. This may lead to failure of the machine assembly or separation and lateral movement of the mating parts, which may cause leakages in case of pressure vessels or fluid containers. This is the reason why bolts need to be tightened sufficiently before a machine is operated. Since tightening a bolt produces tensile loads in the bolt, the bolt preload is also known as bolt pretension. One way to select a bolt of an appropriate size is to assume a worst case scenario where the entire external load acting on a bolted joint is sustained by the bolt alone. We calculate the bolt stress for this case using the equation shown here and pick a bolt whose proof strength is higher than this value. The proof strength for various good quality bolt materials and the tensile stress areas for standard bolts can be obtained from published data in design guides. In case of materials whose proof strength is not available, it can be approximated to be 85% of its yield strength. For example, if a load of 9500 Newton acts on a joint, then picking an M10 bolt made of low or medium carbon steel, we see that the proof strength of the bolt is higher than the stress developed due to this external force. Once we have picked an appropriately sized bolt, the next step is to calculate the preload to be applied to that bolt. Bolt preload is calculated based on the criteria that under normal operating conditions, the total load carried by the bolt should not exceed a fraction of its proof load. The proof load for a bolt is calculated using the equation shown here. For the M10 bolt in our example, we calculate the proof load and the corresponding preload as shown here. In case of fatigue loading, the additional constraints must be applied on the upper limit of the applied bolt preload as shown here. Here, C is a factor calculated using the ratio of member stiffness to bolt stiffness. SUT is the ultimate strength of the bolt material and AT is the tensile stress area of the bolt. If the calculated bolt preload does not satisfy this condition, then additional bolts and or a different size bolt may be called for. But while tightening a bolt, how do we know whether the amount of preload in the bolt has reached the desired value? Measuring the torque applied to tighten the bolt is easier than measuring the bolt preload. Hence, we need a relation between the torque applied and the bolt preload. The torque T can be calculated as the product of the nut factor K, the bolt major diameter D, and the bolt preload P. The nut factor K, also known as the tightening factor, depends on the friction between the nut and the bolt threads and the materials used for the nut and the bolt. Representative values for a few cases are shown in the table here. Reducing the friction between the bolt and nut threads by using external lubricants or cadmium plating reduces the nut factor and hence less torque is required to achieve a certain bolt preload. That is why tightening or loosening rusted bolts requires much more torque as compared to new bolts. In a practical case, we first pick an appropriately sized bolt based on the external force acting on the joint during machine operation. Then we calculate the proof load for this bolt and use it to calculate the bolt preload. 
This calculated value is used to find the corresponding torque to be applied on the bolt head. While tightening the bolts, the torque applied is monitored using a torque wrench to ensure that the calculated value of torque is applied. In the real world, we tighten a bolt by applying torque and rotating it. This tightening of the bolt reduces its grip length and produces the tensile preload. But when we model a bolt in a simulation, we don't want to apply torque to the bolt head to simulate thread insertion because it would be computationally expensive and not add any value or accuracy to the results. Instead, we mimic the shortening of the grip length by slicing the bolt in two parts and applying preload to both the parts. The finite element mesh will actually overlap in the cut region, but this is a convenient way of modeling the shortening of the grip length that occurs when the bolt is tightened. So now let's look at how preload is applied in a finite element simulation. Let's assume that we have a cylinder representing the bolt. The cylinder is cut in half and two nodes are picked on each half of the cylinder. Let's call them nodes I and G. Physically, the two nodes are coincident. Constraint equations are created to tie together the relative motion of nodes i and j. By specifying the relative displacement between nodes i and j or by specifying the preload force acting between them, we introduce a tensile load in the two halves of the cylinder. If the bolt is represented by a line body, we can use a similar procedure to split the line into two. In real life, a machine is first assembled by tightening the bolts completely and then operational loads are applied on the machine. Since simulations just mimic real life scenarios, we can specify the order in which loads are applied, which are called steps. For any simulation involving bolted joints, we first load the bolts in step 1 by applying the preload force to simulate the assembly process. An overlap of the bolt occurs which represents the shortening of the grip length. We call this amount of displacement or overlap the adjustment. In the subsequent steps, we lock the bolts by fixing the relative motion at the cut interface with this adjustment. In other words, when we lock the bolts, we hold this adjustment constant. This represents the fact that the bolts stay tightened when the machine is loaded. So why is it so important to lock the bolts before operational loads are applied? Think about a physical scenario in which a pressure vessel is being pressurized while the bolts are simultaneously being tightened. What do you think will happen? In the real world, the pressure vessel will most likely explode. In the computational world, the simulation won't converge. In the physical scenario, when the bolts are first tightened, Pressurizing the vessel increases the tensile force in the bolts. If the bolts are not locked and instead still set to load, the bolt force will stay the same and not increase or decrease with the applied loads. So the simulation results will not reflect the correct values of stress in the bolts. Since simulations involving bolted joints mimic the assembly process first, such simulations generally consist of multiple steps. Typically, we apply bolt preload in the first step 
and then lock the bolts in the subsequent steps. Applying bolt preload and operational loads in the same step will lead to incorrect results. Simulations involving bolted joints are typically multi-step non-linear simulations. There may be path-dependent effects such as friction or metal plasticity and the order of the loads may affect the final results. Thus, the newton rapson method is often used for solving such non-linear problems. The newton rapson method is discussed in detail in another course titled Methods of Solving Problems. Usually, preloading all the bolts at once versus applying preload to bolts in sequence are the same, but it is possible to simulate the second case. In such cases, just apply a small preload, say about 10% of the final value, to the untightened bolts in step 1 so that the bolts don't separate from the rest of the structure. So in this lesson, we learned why preloading the bolts is important in a simulation, how the bolt preload is applied, and why the bolts are locked. In the next lesson, we will learn about defining preload for different bolt representations.